Now, you guys remember that from last year? That was Hurricane Helene's powerful winds from about a year ago. Now, researchers from the Florida Institute of Technology are trying to get more accurate data on wind speeds to help build stronger homes and buildings. They also want to provide data to the state to help insurance companies charge fair rates. Here to discuss their work is Dr. Stephen Lazarus. He is the professor from Florida Tech. Uh, doctor, thank you so much for being here with us this afternoon. I heard about this, this whirl that you have going, the Wind and Hurricane Impact Research Laboratory. It's fascinating, doctor. And I just want to get your, your thoughts on where we go when we get the data right now. You guys have an array of uh, instruments that you're going to put in really harm's way, right? Yeah, we have been doing this as part of uh, a NIST, uh, National Institute of Standards, uh, funded proposal over the last few years. Um, the, the interesting thing apart, uh, about it is that uh, you, there's no guarantee that we'll get it in harm's way, so to mm -hmm. speak, the instrumentation. Uh, but um, so there's also a component where we are using the wall of wind down at FIU to, uh, to test some things out on a little miniature structure. So we kind of have a fallback just in case we didn't have hurricanes, but we ended up having uh, measurements from two, actually, um, Nicole and Ian, which affected our oh, wow. East Coast. Yep. Yeah. So it was kind of, yep. Very, very cool stuff, too. I mean, when you think about wind sensors, you've basically created something homemade to measure the wind speeds. Can you tell us a little bit about how they work, where you're placing them, how many per structure? I mean, because I'm assuming it's all across Florida, but Florida is a pretty big state and you could have a landfall from any which direction in a given hurricane season. Yeah, so, so we're working, we, work, we were working with a group of folks that had instrumentation, folks, say, for example, the University of Florida. So we had our own little cluster of instruments, basically, and we were focused on actually a single residence in Satellite Beach, believe it or not. Um, so we clamped on some anemometers onto a roof, and then we have what they call a wind LIDAR that points in the vertical, and it measures basically wind speeds all the way up to about 1,000 feet, or about 300 meters in the atmosphere, which is unusual. If you dial into the weather service, you're only looking at one level, or about 30 feet off the ground. Uh, and uh, it's very important to know what the wind is doing above all the surface elements, all the vegetation, the homes, the condominiums, and those kind of things. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Lazarus, where are you putting these on the building? So you have a bunch of them on one building, or are you, are you kind of spreading them around? Because the whole thing is fascinating to me. Yeah, you're showing some cool pictures there. So yeah. uh, one yeah. of the you can actually see the anemometer on the east gable of the of the roof there. Cool. Yeah. Uh, and then and then another anemometer basically mounted in some other weather instruments there in the front yard, same residence. And the lidar, which is a very expensive piece of equipment, was across the street. Um, mm -hmm. And so the idea is to sort of get an idea of what's going on above above the houses and homes and the neighborhoods, and to see how much of those high winds are. Uh, making their way down to where the damage is done. Yeah, I mean, as atmospheric scientists, I think we all know it's not just about what happens at the surface, but at all levels of the atmosphere. And so it's really cool how you're trying to sample all of it. And when it comes to, you know, the end game of this, when you gather all of this data, what do you hope to understand? What do you hope to maybe leave a lasting impact on in regards to home design uh, in the state of, uh, of Florida? Right. So good question. So there's, you know, there's scientists and engineers involved here. So the engineers, of course, are, are, are we're concerned about these non-structural components, uh, you know, the roofing, the cladding, uh, the soffits, those kind of things, and trying to mitigate damage, as you can see in your pictures there. Um, this is from the scientist scientific perspective, we're just trying to basically better understand how some of the winds, I mean, the way hurricanes work is the winds are actually higher just above the surface. The rain falls through that high wind layer and brings down the winds. And it's not just the winds, it's the actual gusts that are really matter and do a lot of the damage. So we're trying to better characterize how much of that wind makes its down, make its way, make its, makes its way down, excuse me, to the surface that, to affect the, the residences in these neighborhoods that caused all that damage. Yeah, one of the so. greatest things you were talking about before is it's going to help insurance rates, right? It'll improve how much insurance is going to charge the homeowner. Yeah, this is ultimately, certainly from a pragmatic standpoint, yeah. standpoint it's definitely economics involved here. And the idea, of course, is to save everybody money. Um, so that, that would be a good thing, definitely. <laughs> That's probably the best thing right there, Dr. Lazarus. I thank you so much for taking the time out. And if you do get some, uh, some good data, I'd love to talk to you again later on this year. Hopefully we don't get good data. I'm not rooting for a hurricane. But if we do get one, my man, I'd like to have you back. Okay, no problem. It was nice talking to you guys. You, you too, absolutely. Thanks for the time.